So we have Ben on the left and David Nunez on the right. You know, Steel Song, both of these decks are actually decks that have been around since set one. Uh, Steel Song, a very favored list, and, and Emerald Amethyst was a list that was very popular in set one, disappeared for a while, but it's always been on the margins. Have you played either of these, Becky? Are, are you fans of these lists? I've um, always been a huge fan of Emerald Amethyst. It just has so many different utilities in it, so many different directions you can kind of build it with that there's just a lot you can do with it. I, I do love mid-range decks because mm -hmm. they're decks that can shift their identity. Um, they, they can shift their identity and be more aggressive or be more controly depending on the matchup. And tempo decks to me are just, are just a lot of fun to play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah let's, but talking about Steel Song for a second, you, you mentioned how the Emerald Amethyst list, you can change it and morph it, and there's all different options available and tool it specifically. But Steel Song 2 has gotten a lot of tools in the last few sets, which means that players are coming into these events with um, you know, a lot of Amber Steel lists, but, but there are multiple identities for this deck. There are aggressive versions which run the Harps and the Piglets and try to get lore really fast early. David, though, is not playing that aggressive Steel Song list, playing a more traditional list. He does run the Queen Shift line, allowing him to sing a five-cost card on turn two. Five-cost cards including a whole new world, all, uh, or, uh, importantly, Grab Your Sword. Um, Grab Your Sword is a card that Ben highlighted, you know, has worked its way out of the meta a little bit, especially since the Bucky errata, uh, but that card could be used to great effect in this matchup against Ben's lower willpower characters in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of always with the Emerald Amethyst, kind of focusing on those smaller characters and using their other skills other than, you know, the large bodies and strength. Uh, we see David dropping the Mr. Smee, a fantastic uh, second play here with the 3-3 three, three line, with the 2 lore, uh, can get a lot of lore extremely quickly. And with Ben playing the Ursula Deceiver, he gets to look at David's hand, and I mean playing in Amber Steel song deck, you don't want your songs discarded. No, you don't. I mean, Deceiver is one of those cards that Ben is going to be altering his hand pretty heavily to find, if possible. Uh, great to take a look at what your opponent's going to do, and being able to pick one of those early songs always feels good. Yeah, absolutely. And dropping the Lawrence uh, Manservant. Right now, David has a fairly uh, tanky board with, with that uh, four willpower on there. Yeah, this is a fascinating turn of events because I do think in this matchup, we think of the Emerald Amethyst player as the one that wants to be aggressive and drive the lore total. But David here, not singing any songs yet, but with five lore on the board, really taking an aggressive line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm excited to see that. Oh, we're our first uh, Mana Mim Fox dropping in, taking out that singer, which is a great choice because as long as um, David can keep playing songs, he is a threat. <laughs> That's true. Cinderella, not only a great singer, but in this deck, um, I believe we're running the Floodborne Cinderella. We are. Yes. The Cinderella Stouthearted, who is so powerful, um, definitely uh Always good to not be able to shift her, because <laughs> on turn five, much scarier than turn seven. Yes, absolutely. Lawrence here challenging into the fox, removing that. Lawrence, of course, gets plus four strength as long as he didn't do damage on him. Um, I think that's what we used to remove the fox. No, how do we... Uh, I missed it. How do we remove the... Oh, we sang Strength of Raging Fire. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Lawrence singing Strength of Raging Fire, uh, which will do three damage, because there's three characters on the board. And uh, Ben forced to rebuild the board here with a rabbit. Lawrence, an underrated singer, for sure. <laughs> I don't think he sang in the movie, did no, he? No, he does not. <laughs> it's his first debut, and uh, he did a great job. Apparently. Yeah. Taking care of a fox to great effect. Oh, we have the Sleepy's flute down, which is excellent for every turn that David plays a song. He's able to get an extra lore off of that. Yeah, and in these Steel Song decks, this really starts a, a clock because most of these decks will run about a, a third of their cards as songs. I haven't done the math in David's deck in particular, but uh, talking with Frank Karsten, the winner of Leal, he said that his deck usually runs about 18 or 19 songs, so, and that's the optimal number for him. So you're going to see a song you know, almost every turn, and the flutes are really one of the closers for this deck. Uh, getting it on the board at this point is something David's happy to do. Absolutely, especially because David already has 12 lore, um, and he has another 5 lore on board, and if he's able to play a song that's six, taking them all the way to 18 already. Yeah, this is this is just a challenging spot. These Emerald Amethyst decks are great. One thing they do not excel at, though, is wide removal. And um, having to deal with all of this willpower on the board um, is going to be a real challenge for, for Ben. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully he can build his board up. I mean, the Cursed Merfolk, a great two lore character there. Uh, hopefully, I mean, he has a lot of cards in hand. Hopefully he's able to... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was I was rating. I was like, let's see, let's see. But no, um, no, Ben. Yeah, so very different here. Ben's on the play instead of the draw. How do you think that'll make a, a difference? Being on the play is always fantastic. And Ben has a lot of the openers, like the Cursed Morfolk, which is a great opening start. Um, he also has, is running Chernobox followers and Pegasus getting a little evasive on board if he, is, is a really um, fantastic way for him to open and start that lore count early. Yeah. Let's see. I'd love to see. Uh, have we altered? No, we're doing our first draw here. So this is fun. So we'll get a chance to see um, which way these players choose to go if we can get the hand cams. There we got a good look here. So I'm going to take a look at Ben's hand and see how he changes his... See what he does. So we do have the Merfolk available and Chernobyl's followers, both turn one plays. Um, we're going to keep... We're going to send back a couple followers. I think we had a Sir Hiss that we kept as well. Yes, which has been doing a lot these past two days. So great one-two play there. Um, on the other side, uh, I see a card that David really wants to have in his opening hand. That strength, or I'm sorry, Let the Storm Rage On. Um, I don't know if we have the Cinderella to pair it with. We do have the Queen and the Shift Queen line available there, though. Which oh, great. Would be a fantastic and a grab your sword. Oh, that's a nice opening hand. <laughs> oh yeah, so that's so getting that queen on board, uh, you can then shift and sing grab your sword at any time. So David is is kind of looking at that hand now. Um, if if he's kept everything, no, we're altering a little bit. So we're gonna keep the grab your sword. Let the storm rage on. Or no, we're sending back the grab your sword. Okay, so that's not available. <laughs> I mean, a five uninkable, not always great. Not always something you want in, in your opening hand. No, it's not. I mean, I, I thought perhaps against uh, the Emerald Amethyst deck, knowing that there's a lot of uh, low willpower cards that Ben's going to be looking to play in the first three turns, um, that might be something he thinks about. But but it is. it can be a brick in your hand if there's no opportunity to play it or if it's not doing a lot of, uh, doing a lot. Yeah. After his altar, uh, I saw that he has a whole new world and also world's greatest criminal mind, which probably is going to be ink in this particular matchup. <laughs> that is true. There's a few cards like Ursula, which you'd be happy to play it on, or, but that's way, way down the road. Yeah. So let's see what Ben opens with here. Inking the kit cloud kicker. Uh, our cursed Murphle coming down. Our zero one to lore, and whenever it's challenged, the opposing player has to discard a card. And David dropping the queen. So we are going to play the queen. We don't have Let the Storm Rage on, so not doing that Cinderella line. Um, but we are... Let's see if we're going to see a whole new world opening here. Ben doing exactly what he wants to do. Turn one, turn two, playing that evasive character, playing that two lore character, um, and starting to drive the lore total. That would actually be really interesting to see the whole new world dropped so early. Yeah, it's always an interesting play because, you know, Ben has altered his hand pretty pretty aggressively for a very particular you know, set of plays, turn three, four, five. Um, and you oftentimes throw your opponent off their game plan. Not only do you get a, a whole new set of cards, but you force your opponent into a hand that they did not choose. Um, and sometimes, oh. well, we're not going to see it because they're going to see the, the discard pile. Um, but so we're not going to see that line here. But um, it is, I, I do always love that line on turn two because it's kind of a gamble. Uh, you could draw your opponent into a, a brick of a hand. Um, and if you've set up your board nicely, it gives you an edge. Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, Vanessa, Ursula as Vanessa, um, one of the greatest singers in the game. Uh, so hopefully she'll be able to sing some songs for David here. I did notice last game, even though he did a exceptionally well very uh few songs actually made it on board that is true uh i think one Maybe yeah just strength, the one just the strength of raging fire and it was very strong so here we have Peter Pan Shadowfinder, a fun card that's been teched in for this particular meta. This is a card that worked its way in uh, really as an answer to Diablo. Yes. Uh, but not a lot of Diablos being run today. In fact, it's worth noting that neither of the Emerald Amethyst decks that we've seen in the last couple of rounds run Diablo. Um, but here it's doing work as a rush character answering that shift target queen. Um, so Ben playing a little more of an aggressive role on the board and, and getting rid of that shift target. Absolutely. And uh, Ben having two evasive uh characters on the board he's kind of setting the tone because you know david can't uh 
can't answer them at this point with his characters. And he'll bounce the Sir Hiss back to hand and answer the Vanessa. And Sir Hiss into the inkwell for a curse merfolk. Beautiful. Yeah, hopefully uh, those curse merfolk, they add up quickly, getting getting more and more lore on board. David, uh, shifting his Robin Hood into Robin Hood, champion of Sherwood. Yeah, interesting. Allowing him to cheat that card out uh, just a little bit early, just one turn earlier uh, with four ink instead of the five. Um, you do use two cards to do it, but uh, valuing getting that card on the board. It does a couple things here, but the biggest one, I think, is it serves as a singer for a whole new world. So if that's a line that David's thinking about, now it's on the board and it's ready to sing next turn, and he can sing it and immediately use his ink to play other things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Robin Hood is an excellent card in this particular matchup because, like we said, Ben's cards have kind of lower willpower, and when Robin Hood uh, banishes in a challenge, you get two extra lore. So... Yeah, oftentimes you have a choice between questing and gaining a character's lore or banishing a character. And with Robin Hood, you can do both. Why not have both? <laughs> Why not have both? <laughs> we see uh, a Merlin goat down there giving a lore. Usually a, a late game hero. But, yeah. I mean, lore is lore anytime. That is true. <laughs> it also is, is one of the stronger strength characters in this deck. Absolutely. So when you're facing a card like Robin, Champion of Sherwood, uh, that is likely to... Oh, here we have it singing. Grab your sword. Grab your sword. A great uh, counter to evasive when you have no evasive characters of your own. And like I said, with kind of the smaller bodies, the squishier little guys, they can't hold up to those swords. No, we talked about how uh, the grab your sword may make a difference in this matchup, and here we see it used to great effect. Although a fantastic answer here, I think, by Ben. Absolutely. Queen's Castle, such a fantastic card with the two lore. And moving that Merlin goat onto it, able to draw another card on his turn. Uh, goat loose in the castle. That's true. Luckily, David drew into an answer for that goat. If he wants it, he does uh, have let the storm rage on. If he wants to play it and dead first. We're going to take a look. We're going to grab a song. I think we have one option available. Uh, World's Grave is coming aligned. Um, take that to hand. We'll see if we want to deal with this goat. We talked about... Uh, Vanessa's played instead. Well, we talked about last game that very few songs were played, but David's hand is lousy with songs right now. <laughs> Vanessa and Ariel are ready. Unlikely duo, but they have the same voice, I guess. It's true. That's true. <laughs> so one of the things these Steel Song decks, speaking of voices and singing, when, they do have the same voice. I know. The exact same voice. Jody Benson, under, underrated for, for doing Ursula's Vo Vanessa so well. That's true. Voicing multiple characters in The Little Mermaid. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the things that the Steel Song deck is trying to do is get powerful singers to stick or high-cost characters to stick, allowing you to do like three times ink worth of things um, than the ink in your inkwell by singing songs instead of playing them. And so David, with plenty of songs available here and plenty of singers on the board to make use of that, including a whole new world if he wants to cycle his hand again and then leverage the other two singers to sing songs immediately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we do have the two, which means one, you know. We've, we've talked about it before. You don't want more than one in hand. Um, but able to play a lot of things um, with th those singers on board... Um, and also a decent amount of resources in the inkwell. Absolutely. Ben, though, setting himself up in a really good position. I mean, anytime you get to 14 or 15 lore with an amethyst deck and goats are available, it's just really strong. That goat represents a 15th lore on the board right now. Yes. And not only do you have to deal with the goat and any other characters Ben drops, but that queen's castle... It's so effective in this matchup because there's not a lot of good answers in David's deck. Um, I don't think he's... I'll have to check if he's running Rise of the Titans... Um, I don't think I don't believe so. he is. He does have, and then along came Zeus. Okay, so that would be the answer, and we see it there. <laughs> Ta-da! It's like we summoned it. Yeah. Um, so we do have along came Zeus, so that's one uh, answer to deal five damage to the Queen's Castle, and then we can challenge into it with something else. I think at this point, you, you kind of have to deal with that castle, because getting another two lore off of it is not Unacceptable. great. But instead, we're going to deal with the goat. Uh, we're going to send that to the Inkwell. David building up his side of the board. We have a whole new world. 
Yeah, David's searching, searching for answers here. I mean, not out of this yet, but there's, there's so much removal that steel has available that if we can keep Ben away from uh, 18, 18 lore, where we're within goat strike range. Um, <laughs> the goat strike range. It. That's true. Which, <laughs> 17, 18 lore is goat range. Yeah. Um, then I think you feel pretty comfortable because you can remove anything he plays with all the, all the songs you have available. Um, and really going wide here, but... Um, would so many singers. <laughs> right. Uh, did we, we, we did draw into another Along Came Zeus. I th we have some singers available still. Yes. So we're going to Along Came Zeus the snake instead of the castle and pass the turn. We'll get two lore off the castle going to 17. Mm -hmm. There is something nice about uh, the Queen's Castle is these locations, they don't fight back. So um, you could just forward onto them with your characters with no repercussions. Go, a goat coming out, getting one more lore. Yes. Should be 18. Okay, so at this, Ben will have yeah. the game if David is not able to take out that cat. Oh, and now 19. We have 19 lore. So, okay. So this is it. David has to win the game on his next turn because mm -hmm. uh, we know we have the goat. In so I say that. David doesn't have to win this game on this turn. What he has to do is either A, win the game on this turn, mm -hmm. or B, deal with everything on the board and whole new world away, the goat. But I don't think we have any whole new worlds available, so I think only option A is available. Let's uh, see. Oh, we are shifting the Cinderella to Cinderella Stouthearted. Uh, she's very powerful. And when she uh, challenges, she's allowed to uh, challenge exerted or unexerted characters, which we see right there, taking out that Madame Mim snake. Taking out those threats, we still need to deal with the castle. We have all of the strength to do it. We use everything. The problem is that goat, though. Um, yeah, unfortunately. It's still hanging around. Yeah. That was a nice board wipe, but yeah, the goat, there we go. <laughs> just, just, I mean, uh, so tight. I mean, so close. Uh, I think that queen's castle stuck around uh, one or two extra turns more than... than So, David opening by inking the world's greatest criminal mind to play that Cinderella ballroom sensation. An excellent singer if there ever was one. Yeah, and this sets up a great turn to play. I, so, I, let's see if we have Let the Storm Rage on. We, we do. do. Uh, this is a fantastic one to play in this deck, especially when you're answering an aggressive deck. Um, and not only does it remove Ben's character and sets back his tempo a little bit, but it draws you a card and keeps your hand going. This is a great opening from David answering that early threat. And the Mr. Smee um, coming down kind of uncontested at this point. And this is very similar to the turn or the game one opening that we saw uh, with a turn one character, turn two Mr. Smee, allowing David to take the aggressive line and start gathering lore, forcing Ben really into response mode. And unfortunately, again, Ben doesn't have a lot to respond to wide board states. He does not. I, I see he has the Ursula Deceiver uh, in his hand, which should be a, a fun... Yes, here we go. So uh, allowed to eliminate a song. Unfortunately, there aren't any there, but it gives Ben some great intel on what is in David's hand currently. And the play draw difference play seemed a huge effect here. I mean, if David is on the... Uh, draw, uh, Ben plays that Deceiver and picks that Let the Storm Rage on. And it completely changes the dynamic of this game. Um, however, David's able to play it before the Deceiver is available, and um, it makes a huge difference here and really gives David the momentum. Into a turn three Lawrence, which is what we saw in game one, uh, David, very similar game plan to, to his first game win here. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Smee exerted without a captain to lead him, so he takes a single damage. Let's see how we respond here. I mean, we are able, so that Lawrence is less than two. Uh, and so instead we have the fox. We're going to bounce the Ursula Tiber back to hand, take care of that Smee. Okay. Honestly, not bad. Being able to replay that Ursula Deceiver to kind of keep check on what songs David's having and kind of eliminating those threats. It's not, it's not bad because a two drop, I mean, you know. It's funny you mention that, because here's an interesting choice. He drew into a whole new world. He's going to take another whole new world because he knows that he has the deceiver. Of course, um, you know, oftentimes a whole new world is no good for you. You'd rather not discard it, perhaps send it to the bottom in the hopes that it cycles up again. But now that'll be available for him if Ben chooses to pick that, that first whole new world. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
David already building up kind of a nice board state. We've seen him able to put characters on the board and they stay on board for kind of a while. Um, Ben's deck provides some burst damage, but it's not kind of that consistent attacker challenging role that we see so much. Yeah. <laughs> we do see that whole new Ben Ben is very excited at this point. He's like, I see you take a whole new world. I don't want you to play it. You're down to two cards and unfortunately sees a second whole new world in there. Um, so it's it's unfortunately an almost useless deceiver at this point, um, other than seeing that the other card is a Cinderella. Yeah. He's looking for some faith trust pixie does. So excited he to 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 ink that, to play the Cinderella Stout Hearted, wow. and then do a whole new world. That was beautiful. Yeah. David got exactly what he wanted there. He was excited for that, and so am I. <laughs> David with a little showmanship there, <laughs> getting that inkable card he needed to get the Cinderella on the board and the whole new world. Wow. And of course, when a song is sung, Cinderella Stout Hearted can challenge ready characters. And there goes Ursula. Because we know what Ursula represents on the board. Uh, Cinderella can shift, but so can Ursula in Ben's deck. Yes, and, and Ben has that Ursula that when she is played, opposing character can't exert characters to sing songs. So it, it really, really gums up the works because David <laughs> wants to be singing with his singers. If there's one thing steals songs, deck like it's, it's it's singing. Can you imagine? Uh. Uh, but uh, Cinderella, that Cinderella start hearted, stout hearted with that three lore, a five five plus she has resist to. She is a tank. Um, so it's really going to be hard for Ben with his deck to be able to to deal with her. And she will need to be dealt with fairly quickly uh, because Ben is already working at a place of being behind. There's, there's just not many answers for that card in this deck. The biggest one is the uh, fox-crab combination, which will allow you to overcome that resist, but you need to set that up, and especially with such limited ink right now on Ben's side of the board, it's going to be a challenge. Ben again, or I'm sorry, David again with a lot of characters in his hand. No songs in this Steel Song deck. But getting some good information there, Ben knows now there's a couple of Rapunzel's available, so we have to be careful about leaving uh, you know, damage uh, remaining on David's characters. Um, Jacques, uh, a fun card here that'll slow down that Cinderella a little bit. It'll slow mm -hmm. down David's momentum. Unfortunately, it won't remove it or deal with it beyond this turn, but something to slow down David's tempo. Yeah, absolutely. Now that she is reckless, she is unable to uh, do anything but challenge. And here we have an arrow again, looking for more songs. We found one. Strength of Raging Fire, which Lawrence sung uh, first game. Mm -hmm. And instead, we're just going to play it with ink here. That'll deal three damage to the Ursula Deceiver, removing that from the board. And David's setting up nicely here, going into the late game. Yes, currently, uh, David has eight lore on board, uh, which is a lot. <laughs> Ben, again, kind of on the back foot. I see he has a queen's castle um, that he looks like he is inking, um, which really was amazing for him last game. But at this, but at this point, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say what would happen. There. Yeah. We do have a camera issue we're working around for a second. Um, so we'll be back. We're going to get that rest of the match in just a second. Um, but, man, this is, this is going kind of like it did in game one. Um, it's, uh, it's a challenging matchup for the Emerald Amethyst list for a couple reasons. As we get back to the game, I'll talk through why. Um, one is the heavy removal that Steel brings to bear against a lot of your characters, which are low willpower. But the other problem is that there's just a not, not a lot of answers for high willpower mid-game or late-game bodies, just like that Cinderella Stouthearted. There just really isn't an efficient answer. And so that's one of the reasons that uh, these Emerald Amethyst lists have such a, a hard time dealing with Steel Song, um, Emerald... Steel is another list it has a, a problem with. It's just these steel big-bodied characters. Yeah, definitely. Um, because you see, like, a lot of bodyguards and things like that uh, coming out of steel. But they uh, aren't always run uh, in, in these in these kind of decks. But Cinderella, probably one of one of the, the largest uh, things to deal with. It's, it's a real challenge. Again, the lower total here, uh, David at 16. Yeah, just or 14, rather, just... just Difficult for the Emerald Steel to come from behind here. So um, really, really f fascinating games. Uh, this is a lot of fun. It kind of, I do think, you know, Steel Song had the, had the edge coming into this game. And um, we see that play out here with it able to take both games one and three. Although Ben putting up a good fight and taking game two there in the middle. Absolutely.